<laughs> I want to hear about that experience. Because, you know, I never would imagine you went to the military. Right? I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't assume somebody who looked like me would have joined the military. But what had happened was... <laughs> I was a single mother at the time, and Dallas ISD was firing teachers. I was a classroom, public school, elementary music teacher, and a single parent. And I decided to take control of my life. I'm not going to wait for a pink slip. I'm going to push forward and make a decision. So I enlisted in the military, and I scored so high on the ASVAB that I could pick whatever job I wanted. Mm. And it came with a $20,000 sign-on bonus. Mm. So I picked a job that had the shortest school because I didn't want to be away from my kids. So uh, the MOS that I picked was just the training for it was five weeks, three days. So I did basic training one summer, and then I went, they call it a split enlistment. And I went to um, the school to learn how to do my job the following summer. So five weeks, three days, and I ended up being a, what they call a 68 Juliet, which is a medical logistics supply specialist, which is a long way to say I ordered and stored and disseminated medical supplies that would keep a field hospital running. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. When I did my homework on you, <laughs> now, I never had a guest come in that's a vocalist. I'd heard, you know, I'd had artists. But a vocalist and a pianist, right? And not only that, we got to talk about Kenya Keys, <laughs> where they come from, and you know when did it start and stuff like that. Yeah, so Kenya's Keys came from again. I took charge of my life. I had just had my third kid, and every time I came back from having a child and would go back into the classroom, I felt like a mermaid in the desert. I just was not ready. I was not ready, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stay home this time. But I got bored, and that's when I birthed my business. And the business was teaching voice lessons and piano lessons online and in my basement studio. From there, Kenya's Keys evolved to, my studio is wholly online now, so I have students all across the United States. I even have one baby in Sweden. I'm an international <laughs> instructor. Right. You heard what she said. You heard what she said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so... Since you said it's online, you got people, you know, everywhere. everywhere. So it's diverse. It is diverse. Yeah. I, I have students, I even have students who are bi-coastal. So one day they're, they'll be in California taking their lesson, and then the next week they're in New York. And they're like eight. And I'm like, I want this life. You know, <laughs> these babies are bi-coastal already. Um, and what I love about Kenya's Keys is I've been able to use the training that I had from my black school experience, you know, mm. Florida a and University, the number one public HBCU, <laughs> you heard you say. the college that graduates the most black baccalaureates in the entire country. I'm a product of the music program of Florida a and University. Mm. So every semester, it was singing in Italian, singing in French, singing in German, learning the Negro spiritual. It was learning how to play Bombs, Brock, Rachmaninoff, and Chopin. And it was learning how to accompany people as they sang as well. They didn't play about us. Mm, I love your resume. Yeah. I love your resume. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about <laughs> making like an album? You know what I mean? Recording professionally? I've got several originals that are just sitting in my hard drive. Um, I think one I have sitting on YouTube, so it's called, what is that song? Oh, it's called You Found Me. Mm. 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 <laughs> you Found Me. I love your energy. <laughs> right. I love your energy. Back in high school, were you like, like a, on the drill? You were yeah, singing or something a, like that? Yes, I was a silhouette. Yeah. I was the last uh, Skyline Silhouette of the Week. For the 95-96 season, I think that game was at Texas Stadium. That was so hype. So shout out to Susan Sheehan, who is still at Skyline House, uh, Skyline yeah. High School. Shout out to Pouncey, too, because now he's the principal. Oh, yeah, that's my boy. Yeah. I was invited to speak uh, at Skyline next month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, shout out to Joseph Pouncey and the Skyline alumni. Yeah, I'll be seeing y'all soon. Yeah, now nobody calls soon. him Joseph. You be like, yeah, you like <laughs> yeah. And you still got your humor. You still got your humor. <laughs> yeah. You still look the same. And I'm so happy. You know, I'm so I'm so happy to come out of the class of '96. Uh, the fat class. The fat '96. I done had yeah. Monique come through. You yeah. Know what I mean? Like I, I love to see people that I went to school with that's doing great things because. When I was in high school, I was still trying to find out who I was. 
You know Yo. I, mean? <laughs> I did I did not know I was supposed to be defining myself in high school. I mean, it was all about the grades and trying to haul behind from B building to catch that bus. At the end of the day, that's what it was for me. Yeah. yeah. I was checking you out on social media. I just seen you like, do you do karaoke or is this one time thing for you? <laughs> I do do some gigs with some local artists here. So you may see me with Jeff Acock. You may see me with Don Diego. You may see me with Eddie G from time to time. Um, these are people I've sung with. Oh, they've known me through a couple of marriages and all three of my kids. Mm. That's how long they've known me. You know, and when I booked you and, yeah. I, and I knew that you was coming on, for some reason, I'm going to say this live, for some reason, and I know you're a vocalist and a pianist, that song, Live Every Voice and Sing, yeah. kept coming into my mind. Because it's black history. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm black and, every day. I don't man, have to wait for that. I, mean, I want to, I want I got to check you out. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, like, what are some of the places, like, if you perform, I want you to be able to let everybody know how, you know how to pull up on you and stuff like that. You can always follow me on social media at Kenya's Keys. You know, it's singular possessive for all you, you know, English freaks out there. Kenya's Keys. You can always find me at Kenya's Keys on social media so you can see what my next gig is. Mm. Yeah. You were once a music instructor. Yeah. Man, can you imagine, you know, like, in these schools today, and mm. I moved the skyline. A lot of these kids, it's like, they hard. You got to have... You know, patience. They say patience is a virtue. Mm -hmm. virtue. Like a music instructor. The patience you know I mean? of Job. <laughs> the patience. I, I find myself back in the classroom. This is a, um, a stepping stone for me. There are things in my life where I had to go back to who I was in order to become a, a new and improved me. Mm. And that, I don't want to say it was me humbling myself because I've always been a teacher. I've always been a musician, but it did require me to come home. Right. Yeah. So you're a musician, right? Yeah. What are some of the, do you play instruments or you just? Do I play it? Man, tell, tell the world what instruments did you play. <laughs> you got to let the world do know. Do I play go, instruments? Man, I want to hear it. Okay. Man, so, for... <laughs> not only am I a classically trained vocalist and pianist, at the age of 15, I was the piano player. Mm. The piano player at 15. For Dixon Circle Missionary Baptist Church. Now, if y'all know anything My about Dixon Circle. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's why I, I was born at Oakland. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was, like at 15, my daddy told me, I was voluntold, oh, you the church's new piano player. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I haven't had a lesson since like the 1980s. What you mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you something like Alicia Keys up in this thing. <laughs> Just imagine like me being 15 and telling all these grown folks. Uh, Sister Annie, that wasn't quite the right note. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Annie, it really go like this. So being in charge of all the music at 15 and then having my grandmother in her pew taking her place. And if I was doing good, she'd be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. But if I was messing up, she'd be like, oh, hell, Lord. You know, I mean, like, no pressure, but if, like, Black Baptist Church don't play, you better hurry up and catch that song mm. before they make it to that chorus or they're going to be talking about you. Uh, in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the future endeavors that you have coming up for the for the work? Ah, about I'm it. like I'm excited. I'm like so excited for this, and I'm I'm trying to like calm down because I'm naturally hype. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't take much for me. But um, I'm launching my second cohort of what I call my Visionary Voice Boot Camp. And this is something specific for entrepreneurs, educators, and professionals who are ready to lift their voice to make some change. You know, I'm sick of us always being overlooked. I'm sick of us always being told, be quiet. You know, because we come from that generation where we were told, you know, uh, kids are meant to be seen, not heard. But for me as a kid, I found that, that people paid more attention to me when I was singing and playing. So that's kind of how music became my jam and my thing. But this six weeks working with me, you'll align your voice, your vision, and your values so that you can change the world. We have to amplify each other's voices because there are people who are trying to mute us all the time right. already. I ain't right. for that. Right. I ain't here for that. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what get good at for me. Right. You know, I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but I always want to get better and polish myself up. You know what I mean? I made a lot of uh, early decisions in my life that I, you know, I got to live with. Yeah. But <laughs> it is what it is. But when you say you were speaking strategist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's talk about that. 
Let's talk about, is, is it, you know, like proper pronunciations and stuff like that? Like, man, I don't know. So proper pronunciation, that is a Western construct, okay? You know, just because I know how to sing in Italian and French and German, do you think mm. I'm, I don't go around uh, speaking the King's English. I'm from Oak Cliff. <laughs> I'm from on that. I'm, I am I am Oakithian. I speak Oakithian. Y'all heard what she said. There's a time and a place. You know, if I'm singing in Italian, then yes, I will have nice tall vowels. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I'm doing right now. And I really encourage my clients to lean into whatever that accent is. Lean into whatever that lisp may be. Lean into it because those are the things that humanize you. And those are the things that help your audience connect with your authenticity. We ain't trying to cover it up or mask it. Why? why? That's, you, that's who you are. Mm. So people are coming to me. They're preparing for their dissertation. That client, was his dissertation was accepted. Uh, a client, oh my God, I'm like so lit for her. <laughs> she is the vice president and CEO of one of the biggest hospital systems in Texas. And she just delivered a speech to the NAACP where they gave her an award and they wrote about it in the newspaper. My clients be doing the dang thing, okay? So it wasn't about helping her to speak properly to, to the NAACP. It was about helping her tell her story in ways that will connect with the audience so that her message is understood. Hmm. Hmm. So that's, uh, I'm interested because I like to get advice. You know, and uh, I'm humble myself, and be always, you know, open yeah. my mind to be learn to learn something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then once you stop learning, I mean, you stagnated, and I don't learn. And but I hear a lot of wisdom coming from you. There's death and stagnation. I hear a lot of wisdom coming from mm. you. You, for some reason, you seem like one of those strong black women. Like, Ooh. what's your taste of music? I, you think I wanted to be <laughs> <laughs> soft like me? Please, at this point, soft like me, please. Okay, soft like me. Oh, my God. The kinds of music that I like, it's always, when I say old school R&B, you know, now the other folks be trying to date us because I think the old school is like the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. But somebody younger than me would probably say, oh, old school is the 90s and the early 2000s. I like the, the like that Motown soul. Yes. Give me some Freddie. Give me some, um, when I say Freddie, Freddie Jackson. Ain't nobody right. talking about Freddie like they talk about Luther, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> give me some um, DeBarge. Give me, right. give me something old, right? Old and grounded. Now, who is who is like you know you a vocalist? Yeah. Right. Who is somebody that's your all time favorite? I, want, I gotta hear this. I gotta hear this. Okay, Layla Hathaway. <laughs> yeah. Layla Hathaway, Donnie Hathaway's daughter. Layla Hathaway has had to blaze a trail. For, you know, in, in, in the industry in a, at a time where, like, people who looked like her, she, she was a big girl. You yeah. know, they didn't want to put her face on it, but, like, yeah, she was but if Donnie had, exactly, gorgeous. but she's Donnie yeah. Hathaway's daughter. And so they would, they would give her the airplay and everything. If you listen to her music, you can hear the evolution of her being okay with who she is. She wasn't trying to conform with that paintbrush they, that they try to put on us and market us as a product. You saw the evolution of her standing and stepping into exactly who she is and owning her power. Same thing with Lettucey. Lettucey oh, is another singer. You know okay. Let me tell y'all, these are women, you know, who don't fit the societal norm expectation of what beauty is for some people. Not for me. You know, because it's already none other than a brother for me. <laughs> okay? We're all, I'm, I'm always bet on us. I'm yeah. always bet on black. Yes. But let us see, oh my God, these women, they're like flawless. Their, their vocal delivery is like impeccable. <laughs> Don't get me started. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I don't think there's nothing wrong with, you know what I mean? Like, I understand, like, in the music industry, sometimes, I remember I watching like that movie, I think Dream Girls. But yeah. Jennifer Hudson had the strong voice. She did. But they wanted Beyonce to be the lead singer because of what she looked like. Because of what she, what like. she looked like. Yeah. Woo, that's a. And that's she a, to be like that. That's a life parallel. That's, that's a life parallel right there. Um, and if you want to take it another further, you know, like we have the Wizard of Oz and we have the Wiz. You know, the Wizard of Oz gave us Somewhere Over the Rainbow and a lot of people like that. But when we had the Wiz. The one with Michael Jackson, right? Yeah, Michael no, Jackson. The, the, the Scarecrow. Yeah. <laughs> when we had the Wiz, I feel like 
the Wiz is uh, kind of like the story of my life where, you know, you, you have to find the courage. You have to have the heart. And you always want to get home. You're like, uh, like uh, the Wiz is like it for me. So all my kids, I've like hazed all my kids into watching the Wiz. I've hazed all my kids into watching like certain movies and having certain experiences because I want them to know that we are excellence. Period. Right. Period. We are excellence. <laughs> I got to ask you this question. Yeah. You know, the color purple just came out not too long ago, uh -huh. right? And a lot of people didn't realize that it was a musical. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> see? Was, see what I'm saying? Look at you. And when people went to go check it out, they was like, oh, this ain't what I was expecting. Yeah. Man, give me your opinion on that. They should have stuck with the original. <laughs> they they just Left I want, it alone. I want to say bless your heart. Bless your heart. Because people who who know knew. Yeah. Uh it it started out as Alice Walker's book. And then the book became adapted for Broadway. And then, you know, so in Broadway of course there's gonna be tons of singing there. I don't think some people were prepared for, oh my gosh, we got Danielle Brooks and Fantasia and we have, uh, who else was in there singing? Because I'm like, Fantasia's a singer. Fantasia's playing the main character. Main, main character got to sing something. I think uh, uh, Taraji Henson was and in there. Taraji, people weren't expecting Taraji to be able to sing. Taraji probably wasn't expecting Taraji to be able to sing. <laughs> but Taraji did that with the training that she had. She was able to dig deep and find these notes and in these spaces and in these places. Because to me, music is it's more than the notes on the page. It's the, it's the combination of the sound and the silence connecting with people. Being a vocalist, like what is this thing that uh, I hear about? A lot of vocals like to drink tea and lemon and stuff like that. What's the reason behind that? Ooh, you have to lubricate. Mm -hmm. You got to hydrate because you can trust and believe I've already had two cups of tea <laughs> before I got here. I came in here with a drink and I've got mm -hmm. more water in the car. As a singer, you have to keep that instrument lubed and primed and ready for action at any given time. The other thing you need as a singer is rest. Mm. You got it at any given time. At any given time, I don't know what's it's something. Tug I ain't gonna put you on the spot. Oh, you can't. But for some reason, it's something tugging on me. Yeah, and I understand we don't have no instrumentals in here, but like I told you, every time I look at you, you know, <laughs> I love your humor. But there's something about that song that keeps coming to my. Let's see. Uh, Listen, this, every voice and sing. That's something that is. It's pretty much. Is it's it public like domain at this moment? You know, I'm trying to make sure we got the clear no, tour. No it's the drop. I mean, and you know, it's James Weldon Johnson and Jay Rosamond Johnson. But I want to. Okay, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. High as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. <laughs> hey, hey, man, y'all yeah. heard that? Like, you the first right here on the drop. You the first right here to ever break Sorry. out. I don't like no musical <laughs> instruments or nothing. Really? You know what I mean? I remember when I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, yeah. In elementary school, every 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 month in February, we just had to sing that song. All three, all three verses, all three verses. Yeah. And now you trigger some memories and thoughts. <laughs> all three man, I verses. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it, man. Like for those people that need help, need coaching lessons. Do you like you know you teach how many right? I do still provide vo uh, vocal and piano instruction to a limited audience because my main focus is speaker strategy. Mm. I help you. Find those words. I mean, oh, just think of how many lives people can change. Think about how the power of your words, that, that echo, the reverb, the EQ of it. Everything has a frequency. You know, now we're getting into the science of it. Yeah, talk about we're, it. We're getting into the science of it. Certain frequencies affect different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's aware of that. Mm -hmm. The fact that I know as a musician, you know, from playing in the Black Baptist Church, the the spell that gets cast by me playing in those She's saying it. yeah She's saying it. there's a spell cast mm -hmm. and taking place as somebody is hooping and high and then we go up to the church ah, chord <laughs> and then we're going down yonder da -da. You, there there is a magic to that that I have been gifted I have been divinely gifted with the skills and the talents to help cast a spell and the fact that I know how to do that with my fingers and my voice sets me apart. 
I think I need to get you to reveal a secret. <laughs> Right, because yeah. sometimes when we listen to singers yeah. and we look at them from the exterior <laughs> things and what their physical statue look like, how is it that comes because so, a person so small yeah. they have a voice so big? Is this is it something about the way they you know? I mean, let, they I know their know. body. They know yeah. their body. It, it is a whole body exercise to sing, and it mostly starts in the mind. So what we're looking at here, when you got those teeny tiny people that can really belt and roar and growl, they are masters of their instruments. Breath work, especially, knowing how to use these abdominal muscles in ways that stretch and pull and suspend time, that is a skill. That is a skill. Mm -hmm. Prime example, Whitney Houston. Whitney, Woo, Whitney the Houston was so, she was so petite and, 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 and slim, yeah. but her voice was strong and amazing. I mean, crack mm -hmm. and crack. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> crack is whack. <laughs> man, this is a drop on DMWIRadio.com. I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm telling you, without the listeners, we wouldn't be nobody. I'm telling you. Without nobody following. And that's why I have people like you to come in. Yeah. Man, I love your humor. I love the laugh. <laughs> she knows her body. Whitney is, is the songstress. Mm. That She is the instrument. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just like I remember uh, Jennifer Hudson. I think she won yeah. an award because of that, that role just for the singing part. Look at okay. Let's take Jennifer as an example because when we first encountered Jennifer on American Idol, was it American Idol? I think, I think so. that's the show. There was a bigger version of Jennifer, and then now yeah. we have a smaller version of Jennifer. Jennifer had to relearn her body. She had to relearn how to sing with the body that she had because the cavity for re for the for everything to resonate, it went from being this big drum mm -hmm. to now it's a slim can. Mm -hmm. And so things move differently. The medium, pa things pass through the medium differently. She had to adjust to her new body. Right. People, you know what? It's science. Like, man. let me ask you this here. You no, know, uh, shout out to you know Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. And she went on to do other things besides music. Right? Mm hmm Do you think because of her size that you know they wanted to try to form it into an image to be smaller? You know, even though she has such a great voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of like what the movie be, uh, this plan. <laughs> so when we go back to um, Jennifer, the, the Jennifer, the, the original Jennifer from Dream Girls. What's her last name? Uh, I know her name was uh, Jennifer. Because she was messing with the guy. She got pregnant by the guy. Because she, she, the the, the she, she was a bigger woman, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. It was like Emmy, oh, Emmy, or something like that. Or it was some kind of name. But, but she, she was, you know, they. If 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 we don't fit the cookie cutter production line of what they think we should be, it's a problem. And so I think Jennifer, on some aspects, has has. I don't want to say had to conform. She chose to conform on some, some levels. Now, I don't know Jennifer. Right. This is me on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, do your thing. We love you. But can we talk about, we were talking about tiny people and their power. <laughs> can we talk about Alicia Keys, though? For sure. For sure. Because if I was told you, you remind me of her. You a vocalist and a pianist. You know what I mean? You get your Alicia Keys on. You know what I mean? I mean, did you hear what happened at halftime? Or was it just me? I heard a crack at the beginning. At the very, the, the very first note she cracked, I said she cracked because I produce, I make music too. And everybody said, How you hear that? I said, My ear is straight here. Her like, very first note, I didn't hear it. she cracked. And then she was good after that. She was good after that. But she got it out the way. I'm glad she got it out the way on the first note. And you think she wasn't warmed up yet? Or did she didn't have a problem? Nerves. Nerves. Yeah, nerves. Yeah, nerves. This is a big Bowl. stage. This Bro, is that's the Super Bowl. And that is yeah. the most watched halftime show in the history of, of uh, the Super Bowl. She cracked out the gate. Now, if you. Let me tell you now, the magic of AI now, if you go back and watch the video, and the crack isn't there. No. The very first note out of her mouth, she cracked it, crack, crack, crack. So you think it, you think it may have something? You said like it was the nerve, right? Yeah. But, you know, sometimes when people know they're finna perform a scene, mm -hmm. like I said, they'll drink that, that, that drink tea that or whatever. You know what I mean? Hey, man, you should have got your... <laughs> something to relax, you know, whatever. You can't, you can't relax that. You got to smoke something or something. That's Super Bowl. That's Super Bowl. You got to smoke something. I agree. You see, she didn't agree. No, for I real. Agree. You I ain't, I'm going to get that long. You say smoke something. I, I agree. 
I can either confirm nor deny. Nervous, but... I agree. So what, 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 what would smoking do to him? But I thought smoking would do something There's so too. much in here. There, like there's a, a marathon of thoughts that go on in here that have to be filtered out of here. Because when you're singing, whatever you hear coming out of our mouth, we're already somewhere else in our head. We're further down the line in our head from what you hear. We're thinking about, okay, how much breath do I need to take? Do I need to breathe in between this word? All right, the break is getting ready to come up. Do I stand here and look pretty? Or do I turn around and dance and look at the, you know, like a thousand thoughts, a thousand thoughts. And you have to make it look pretty mm, mm, mm. and flawless. Because, man, I'm, you know, it's kind of hard, like, to be able to multitask. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we talking about Lisa Keys, right? We just talk about her husband huh? because she sing and mm -hmm. play the piano. Singing and you know what I mean? And then you have people that sing and dance. Man, yeah. that take a lot of wind up out of you. Yeah, I'm look. I ain't about that singing and dancing life. I ain't saying that right now. Just <laughs> let me let me sit on this on this uh, on this music stand bitch uh, stool <laughs> and and just sit here and be pretty and say. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little shake and a shimmy and give you a little shoulder and take it back. <laughs> I bet you the students love to come to your class. <laughs> they actually do because I give them more than the music. So right. as we were learning, lift every voice and say, you know, as that rite of passage for, for kids, um, you know, we start with, well, this song was written in 1900. It was written to commemorate Abraham Lincoln's Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass's birthday. Both of them were born in February. Uh, hey guys, what was happening in 1900? And you know, the kids don't have a point of reference for that. So we back it up to 1865, Emancipation Pro Proclamation. Then we go a little bit forward, 13th Amendment, uh, freed the slaves, 14th and 15th Amendment, and what they did, granting citizenship. And mm -hmm. it, it's more, the music becomes a history lesson. It becomes a history lesson. So uh, they're learning what are the free states in, in the slave states? What's this Mason Dixon line thing? What was Harriet Tubman talking about? Or, or then we pull up Cynthia Erivo singing Stand Up. And these kids are singing it with their whole chest. <laughs> <laughs> like they about to go north towards their freedom. And they have ownership over who they are. They, they, nobody can tell them what they ate anymore because of what they've learned. Hmm. You know what? I, like I'm smiling on the inside mm -hmm. because you very much need it because we need to know the history, and I you just teaching me something. You know what I mean? It's necessary. I heard it, I heard the wisdom coming from you, and 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 that's why you hear it. That's why I, I tell my guests this is no coincidence. It's not an accident. You know, you earned this. You earned this to be here. And I it, don't want to earn it. I love it. Your voice is beautiful. <laughs> You're humorous. I definitely don't <laughs> you know, know I mean? it. Like when you driving down, like when you get in your car right yeah. now, what you got in the deck? Like what you got on the playlist? <laughs> Silence. 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 She's just like to think. You're a thinker. I don't really listen. The, the irony here is I don't really listen to music in the car. <laughs> like working at Popeye. Yeah. But I don't eat it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't want no chicken. I just ate, you know. I just ate. Just work with chicken. Yeah. So when is your best time that you listen to music? At home. And when I'm cranking up and when I'm practicing, I'm I'm the kind. I feel like I'm undiagnosed ADHD. I will play the hell out the same song <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. I don't care. I'm like learning the chords, the intricacies of why that singer did that run that way. Where can I find room in my voice to imitate that but still make it mine? So. Uh, it, it's work. Music for me, listening to music is work. I can't just listen to music. I don't think you'll find any musician who can say the same where they just listen to music. We're analyzing form, chord structure, texture. We're analyzing as we listen. So <clears throat> it's not ever for leisure, hardly ever. Some people might want to know this, the answer to this question right here. Like, you got a beautiful voice. Do like the people who book you to perform at weddings and stuff like that? Yes, yeah. I've, I've talked to them. I've sung so many first dance songs, and I know it's like the super special moment where um, they're they've already been married, and now they're presenting themselves to their loved ones, and they're dancing to my voice. Mm. That is um, mm. something I don't take for granted. And then the the other side of that is funerals, funerals. I have played two of my grandparents' funerals. That's an honor. I feel like I was like they they've chosen me. They chose they chose me to play their funerals. I don't think a lot of people could manage the grief and then still perform, so to speak, but for me it was paying tribute. It's paying tribute to them because if it weren't for my grandparents, I wouldn't be a musician today. 
uh, as a kid, we didn't have, you know how you grow up poor, but you didn't know you were poor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> mama. Mama, I love you. <laughs> Real. <laughs> you know how you you grow up poor, but you mm. don't realize until yeah. you get away. Mm. You didn't realize that that your money wasn't supposed to be brown and white. Yeah, I was like, I was like, because you know we'd be in a grocery store, and my mama would be like, all right, y'all can get like the frosted plates instead of the 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 the, the, yeah. the shiny yeah. tigers or whatever the little off brand would yeah, be. The generics. Right. Like, we get, we get, I want them Fruit Loops. Yeah, we can get the Fruit yeah. Loops instead of the the, the real one instead of the circle hoops. You know, and, they got no commercials. Right. Okay, they're great. You know, I'm mean, like, I'm filling up the, the basket, and we get to the checkout, and she opened up that book, and I was like, "Mama, what is this?" Oh, I love your energy. Yeah, I love this. So what is this? Yeah, yeah man, it, man, we grew up poor but didn't know it. So it, it's a blessing to be a blessing. Mm-mm-mm. Because you know, my grandmother, my grandmother, like. <laughs> Sometimes she would just be in a room laying down. She just just break out just singing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I used to love to get up under and just listen to her. Yeah. Cause she'd be singing me little little gospel songs. You know what so mean? we'll be done <laughs> with the troubles of the world. And sometimes yeah. when I get a little older, I'm trying to I'm trying to run out of there. I don't want to hear that because the way I was living. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't trying to hear that music right now. But that I was love, her talking to you. Yeah, I love. Uh, I love music. It's timeless, and you just seem like an artist. You just you just look like an artist, strong black woman. You know what I mean? Just you just like one of the yeah. people that that attend uh, cultural events. You know, and stuff like that. I with love art it. And history. You know what I mean? Because it's history and the music yeah. that that you know a lot of people need to hear that from you. They need to know the backstory. It's not mm-hmm. just like all right, they cut something that lasts four minutes and twenty three seconds. They they had to do something to get there. Sometimes the singer is recording at four or five in the morning because that's when their voice may have that extra grit and that growl in it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a singer will just take take one cut. Like we have um, Alanis Morissette's, uh, which song was it? Pretty much almost that whole album, that Jagged Little Pill album. Mm-hmm. Many of those songs are like one take songs where you just go in, you go into the studio, you sing it once and that's it. Um, people who are familiar with music production know that a lot of times you are recorded once, twice, three times, four times, 50, 11 times, and then you chop and screw those pieces and put them together to make it sound like a perfect production. Mm-hmm. It is it is a symphony. It's an orchestra that's created. So when people don't sound like the record, there's a reason for that. <laughs> you know a song that I love to hear? What? And, and it's inspiring at the same time. And, it, and that song, Born by the River, Sam Cooke. Oh, I love that. I love to hear that song. Woo, you know what I mean? Yes. Like they played it in a movie one time, and I was like, man, you know what I mean? It's, it, it touches you. It t- it touches me. I, ooh, I, I had some kids. I had, again, me working with kids. I was working with an online African-centered homeschool, and I was teaching their music component. And we the kids recorded... <laughs> They recorded. I taught them music production. All right, go in here and use this use this link. And you're gonna record um, your 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 track for uh, the Sam Cooke song and listening to all these different voices. Like, I was born by the river. I'm like, mm. got the little babies. Mm. Talking about they were born by the river in a little tent when you know you're born at the hospital down the street. But <laughs> it, it was just it's so refreshing to know that Sam Cooke's legacy lives on. Mm-hmm. You know, we gonna talk about. His funeral. We don't talk about that. How? Um, what's the man? The woman's got to have it. No, not him. Bobby. What did he do? The dude that showed up at Sam Cooke's funeral with his wife. Mm-mm. What? What is that man's name? Oh my God! There's what another. Was the for that? There's another singer, and I think his name is Bobby or Billy or something. But the singer showed up with Sam Cooke's wife because he he was now diddling Sam Cooke's wife. And then, I mean, you mm, mm, to the man funeral. To the man funeral in mm. his, in his suit. I, I forgot that part. In the man's suit. Oh man, I what love. is going on, <laughs> man? It's so much. It's so much stuff that you know. It's so much information out there. Yeah. It's so much information out there. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm telling you, they love you. I know they love you. I love your voice. <laughs> and I wish I could just. I can just. You know, man. I can just. You know, picture you singing in, in a. Wedding 
Something like that. Wait a minute. But, I don't know why I love the sad songs the most. I'm trying to like, okay, let me let me come back to, to find the, the songs that have a little bit more life in them. But I love a good, sad song. Mm. There's so much emotion that, that comes with that. And you ain't never thought about like trying to, you know, get off into it and travel mm-hmm. and, you know, see the world. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, your gift. God I'm, gave I'm, you that beautiful voice. I'm crafting a plan right now that puts me out of this cold in the wintertime. Mm-hmm. It's either going to be Puerto Rico or Costa Rica. Let me, you know, I'm, I'm formulating that plan right now because there's no way I should ever experience winter again. I'm sick of this. <laughs> sick of this. Shoot. You don't like that cold. Huh? I do not like the cold. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Oh man, mm-hmm. it's something about it's something about that pig in us. You know what I mean? We don't like the we don't like the cold, but we can take the heat. So I don't like yeah. neither one. I don't like too much of neither one of them. I like to be warm. I like the heat too. I mean, because the heat is like um, the heat's good for my voice. But with us being here in Texas, it comes with the allergies, and so that's the uh, that's the flip side of that. It's like I'm allergic to the air that we breathe. I want to ask you this here because I'm curious. Yeah. And, you know, music has something to do with our history. Mm-hmm. Our black history. Because, you know, the slaves were singing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, what was the purpose for that? Was it because, you know, what was it? You know what I mean? It, even in the Bible, yeah. it talks about how they went somewhere to the walls yeah. and they sung and they fell down. Yeah. You know I mean? They sung the hey, they sung the walls of Jericho, walls of Jericho. down. They sure did. Yeah. But that that song, a song that a lot of people know, Amazing Grace. Yes. Um that that when we get into the music theory behind that, that is a song that's based on what we call a pentatonic scale, five sounds. Da 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 da. But the melody of that song was carried in the belly of the slave ships. Mm. That was the way that they were communicating because those people in the belly of the ships, they didn't all have the same tongue. But what they could have in common was the humming of the... What happened was the guy who was captain of that ship heard that melody and wrote words to it. And that's how Amazing Grace became Amazing Grace. Mm. It was him trying to atone for... The wrongs that he was doing. Mm, history. History. <clears throat> you, you, you could have been a history teacher in music. <laughs> I love history, science, and music. Yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. They all go together for me. Yeah, and I can see, I can see you, you know, teaching and educating a lot of youth on on music and yeah. history and how it coincides. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It it goes together quite nicely. Not my mama. Oh, my mama said it was Bobby Womack. I was right. See? Yeah, Bobby, it was Bobby Womack. Womack. Thanks, mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, mama came through. Hey, mama, P.O.P., hold it down. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, thank mama for getting you in that church as a young girl. As a young girl. Because <laughs> I used to play for her. So my mama would be singing the solo, and I'm like playing for my mama. Mm. So, you know, singing is, it runs in the family. It is something that generationally, I don't think any of us will ever put it down or leave it behind. I think the odd thing for me is I named all my kids after jazz musicians. Oh, man. And none of them play anything. They just. <laughs> can they sing? <laughs> they can they, all, they, they they can all sing. Can but none of you you won't catch them like, all right, mommy, I'm going to the gig with you. Mm-mm, they're not going to do that. So my oldest. Is is Miles after Miles Davis. Miles Davis. My middle is Ella after Ella Fitzgerald. And my little is Ellington Langston after Duke Ellington and Langston Hughes. Mm. None of them kids play a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, none there. It's in their it's in a family, it's in a bloodline. You know, sometimes we try to run away from our, our gifts mm-hmm. and stuff like that and our talents. And then when it when it, it keep popping, it keep it's gonna surface itself. You know, if you that's in you, it. it's gonna vince you. You gonna somebody gonna hear you. Yeah. You gonna be, you're gonna be uh, singing in the shower. Yeah. And somebody gonna and they gonna hear it and say, "Who is that in there?" And that's, that's, awesome. that's my dog. And that sound like that. Yeah. I mean, that's how it happened. Cause I remember watching that movie uh, with Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? Woo! And she was in the church and she was just singing. Ah! Yeah. And, and and they put her out the church. But she was walking up the road singing. <laughs> they put her out because, you know, we don't do that. We don't do that kind of singing. She's singing like that, like for the world. And if you missed, like Tina just came on tour, just left the Dallas-Fort Worth area last uh, last weekend. It was in Fort Worth. And the week before it was in Dallas. If you missed seeing Tina, you missed 
a mighty show. Mm. Shout out to uh, Taurus Lovely because that's one of my fellow fam Ewans. He plays drums on that tour. That that thing was friggin' phenomenal. We know Tina Turner's story. We know Angela Angela Bass had displayed it beautifully for us, and she was robbed. She should have gotten an award. She didn't get an award for that. No, Angela. Oh, she did. Yeah, they just slept on on Angela. Like, oh, oh man, everybody love that movie. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we all know her story. We know that Tina Turner um, was at um, one of the hotels down here when she ran away and left. Mm-hmm. You know, when she when she. Well, let's talk. What about the greats like? Patty LaBelle and Rita Franklin. <laughs> I love me some Miss Patty because she's a fellow Gemini. I make no apologies. <laughs> I make no apologies. We are who we are. Y'all can take it or leave it, You're hate crazy. it or love it. I mean, we seem to have an affinity for attracting people. Boy. Period. Mm-hmm. Without trying. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's the stick on Gemini. Yeah. Is that the crazy? That's that's what people say. I mean, and I figured that's why you put the you put the disclaimer out there when you said it. Yeah, because mm. I've, I've been with many a Gemini. Oh, and, well, been with interacted, <laughs> did everything but commit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like this. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. It, it definitely comes with I, with something. Not gonna lie to you. Had yeah. an amazing time. Yeah. But that commitment was just like, you a Gemini? Nah, that's why she did. Yeah, man, because we differ in. Yeah, but you know, that's, 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 <laughs> it, you know, it didn't work for me. Yeah. It doesn't mean it, it, it doesn't work for anybody else or whatever. <laughs> but every Gemini I have met has been like crazy talented. We can't help it. Crazy talented. Pop was a Gemini. Absolutely. We, mm-hmm. we cannot help it. Yeah. It's always going to be something with the voice. It's always going to be something with for the people. It's always going to be something for a cause right. when it comes to a Gemini. Right. We can't help it. We got all this energy and, right. and we are here to change the freaking world. Mm. I said freaking. Time flies when you're having <laughs> fun. Yeah. Like, like, man, I love, I, I'm glad that you came. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And before we, before we get up out of here, I want to you know allow you to get some shout outs and but I'm going to ask you this. Do you have any future plans for this music and business endeavors that you want to talk about? You know what I mean? Here it is. You can share it right here. It's your platform. It's all I've, about you. I've, you been, um, I've been called upon by Jeff Acock to sing and write uh, and collaborate, collaborate with him on a gospel album. Uh, wow. That's that's like man. I feel like I'm the biggest heathen out there. You know, I mean, <laughs> but you know, I'm a preacher's daughter. There's like so many. Mm. You know, my cart was before the horse types. There's so many reasons for me not to be the person called upon to do this. But then there's also so many reasons for me to be the person called upon to do this because I know I'm a great producer. I know I'm a great writer. I know I'm a great arranger, mm. and I have to use those talents or I'm not doing what's then called upon me. Mm, perfect. You see, yeah. I love the answer. Yeah. I love that because God gave that voice. And he can take it away. And, 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 and it's meant to be used. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, I can go on and on and on. I, like, it was a time they were singing in the Bible. They were singing and, and, and the doors just open. Doors and doors. That's how powerful down. music is. You know what I yeah. mean? That, that is the power again. Going back to those frequencies. Those vibrations, those echoes, those reverberations that go out into the world, and that ripple doesn't stop. It keeps going out through the universe. That ripple continues. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. To Kenya's in the building. As you say, straight up out of Oak Cliff. Out of Oak Cliff, you know over there by Big T. <laughs> yeah. Straight up out of Oak Cliff, you know, with a powerful, beautiful boy from God, inspiring. You know what I mean? Humorous at the same time. <laughs> still still looking like you 26. <laughs> at 45 and a half. 45 and a half. <laughs> Don't be a stranger because yeah. with your latest project that's coming up, you know, DFW Radio also has the gospel. Oh, yeah. y'all, y'all, got, so, y'all got the intro written for that already? Yeah, so it's been around. <laughs> you, are, you, are you on it? You, you need a co-producer? <laughs> She, see how she did it? You need a coke and she yeah. know I produce as well. Yeah, yeah you need a coke? Well, I, 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 do, I do need to holler at you about some stuff, though. Okay, uh, what's your preferred uh, DAW? Pro Tools and Logic. Bam, we can work. I love Pro Tools. Logic is my jam. Pro Tools, I dibble dabble in it. Well, see, I'm an old, well, we're old school. Yeah. Pro Tools, I was raised on Pro Tools, and what I actually do is I can produce them both, but I'm, I, had to, I had to get out of that old school thing. 
because it, it burned me to go from you know from uh, analog to digital. Yeah. So once I once I went from analog to digital, I was like, okay, this is what the new wave. I'm gonna have to work with it. And then I stuck with Pro Tools. Stuck with, I didn't get into Logic till like almost ten years later. My young guys kept trying to come on. T. I was like, man, I'm I'm, I'm uh, but yeah. now I'm starting to see the benefits of it. It's like, oh sh. Yeah, this like it's nice. Mm. It's no, it's so, noise. So I'll produce in Logic. And then I'll dump, I'll dump it to the desktop. Yeah. And then I'll import it into Pro Tools, Pro Tools and then I'll do my seasoning and all my magic. Yeah, you got to put the seasoning. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. put the seasoning everything on it. Everything else Pro Tools put that way. Okay. Me. And I, for me, everything always comes back to Logic. <laughs> it's cool though. Logic. And I, I, I respect everybody that knows how to use Logic because to me, I, I don't personally, I don't when I chop, I don't like the looping. I got you. It has like a the synchronization isn't is crisp. Yeah. And I use an MPC. I got an ASR10. I got okay. I got, I got the throwbacks. Okay. I got the throwbacks. Yes. So I, I mean, but hey, I don't like what anybody does, but I prefer to do my my looping stuff in Pro Tools whatnot. But my cousins get at logic. And I'm just like that's that's magic. Like because to me it just I, I use it for what I use it for. And I'm good. Yeah. The fact that we we know how those two complement each other. We know how to make those two work. Because if you ask the average person what's your favorite dog, I'm like, what the hell's a dog? Yeah. <laughs> Digital <laughs> audio, audio workstation. Station. Hey, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I was like, what you said that I knew it was something. Her line of work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a Berkeley grad. That's, that's why it's good. good there's certain people. words we can say, and it's like, we'll know. But like, you take know it to saying? the, go back to the one, hit the four. Yeah. Play that five. And then there's different lingo. Like when I'm when I'm when I'm producing and what you call it, I'll say this and they'll be like in and outs. I'm like, yeah. in and out. Like, what do you mean? Ad libs. Or, you know, right. I'm like, I'm like feeling so the in and out. So it's it's cool yeah. because now I'm taking the best of the young mm -hmm. and I'm putting that in because you know Dr. Dre's the one that I've met him before and he yeah. was like, take advantage of that. Yes. Use what they're doing and put what you're doing and you can stay afloat and stay relevant that, and, that's and, what and, I and have clients. Now I have Younger clients, older clients, but the one thing I can't teach people, I say I can teach you physically, yeah, how to produce, but I can't teach you how to hear. Hear, that, they, yeah, I was already that. pointing over here. I can't teach you how to hear. They're like, "Well, teach me that." That's impossible because <laughs> That's something, that, by itself. something that, yeah, a sound that Pharrell would use. There's a lot of sounds Pharrell would use. I would never touch in a million years, but it works for Pharrell. You see what I'm saying? Though? Yeah, it's like I've heard some from like. Damn, he took that sound. Killed it. I would have never used that. That's the beauty of music and the beauty of being an artist and the beauty of creating. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling that's, you. That's, that's something else that gives me hype because, you know, as a producer, you can hear the holes. I don't even listen to music the same. When I, when yeah. I listen to music, people like, I say, the way I hear music and the way you hear music is not the same. Because it's, when I'm hearing rap, I don't hear him. I hear, I hear the, music. the music. behind. Yes! And then years later, damn, he said that? Because, like, <laughs> no, real talk though, like, uh, me and her hear music, it's, it's, it's I, first of all, I see it. I see it. Me too. I visualize it, I see it. And I can break down, I can be like, Mario, if me and you ride together, Mario, you hear that? You like, hear that what? You don't, you don't hear that right there? And, it, and it, it's, it's like every fourth note, he hits it once, and you're just like, like, I'm telling you, like, man. What you dragging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you get artists together and we do it together, it's magic. It's magic. Man. And y'all heard what she's y'all heard what they said. Like it's educational and stuff like that because y'all know and experience mm -hmm. that it's people like me that y'all can educate and, you know in life. And I've been doing it, I've been because my dad had a deal with Epic in the eighties and stuff. I grew up in studios with Bobby yeah. Walmack and all of them. So oh, I, so, so you know about Bobby Walmack. I, I, I have some of Sly's original equipment. Yeah. Slide the Family Stone was, like lived with us in New Jersey, so I grew up. I didn't have an option. The closest thing I have to that is um, Madaku Chenwa. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Madaku. This dude gave me some drums. He gave me some equipment. <laughs> he gave me some drums one time because he needed a studio really bad, and he called me and he was like, "Man, I know it's last minute, yeah, but if you give me this time, I get the drums you want." I said, "Boy, come on!" I was gonna let him do it anyway because of who he is. Yeah, but. Monaco, and I'm sorry we took over the interview. Oh, it's no, all no, good. It's cool. He, I'm listening. He's a student of the game and a teacher at the same damn time. And just when you think that you the shit, he, he, he comes. comes. He comes Turd Mountain. This yeah. cat right here, here is he amazing. Mm -hmm. What he knows, like I'm over here about to yeah. sample a, a, a piece of Rocky. Oh, that's Bill Conti, the original. Like, he knows the composer. <laughs> He's like, let me just give him a call. He made me tighten up. He made me tighten up. You all, don't have all, to. All my knowledge of being around him because. When, when when there's somebody good, there's always someone better or that's more of a student of it. And yeah. Monica Chinua, he does he, he does not get his just due. He's a, he's a product of here. 
<laughs> Woo! Yeah, so Monica, let, he gave me some equipment, and I felt like, oh my god, you oh, know. Yeah. I still got those drums, and guess oh, what? I, get- I won't give them away. Just because he gave them to me, right? And when he gave them to me, I said, "I, I said, bro, I was doing all this. I was calling him Yoda and all that. Like, he ain't yeah. gotta do all that." He's but. so humble. <laughs> yeah, he's he is so else, so humble. Such yeah. a good person. And yeah. for people who don't know who it is that we're talking about, this is the person behind Erica Badu's greatest life. hits. Yeah, yeah. love my life. Mm. He's mm-hmm. a, a Grammy Award winning producer. And he just don't. He don't get his just due. I'm telling you, right here on the drop, you know what I mean? You're a woman with many hats. I'm telling you, I'm a woman with many hats. I'm glad that you came. You're educational yeah. all at the same time, have mm-hmm. a beautiful voice, Thank and you. sense of humor. And, not on, <laughs> and and then you, 96 Fresh Skyline alumni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you look at her, look, look, at her, look at her energy and behavior, man. You got to yeah. love it because that also, it, that also goes into you. Dog. It also goes into your music, your energy. Love it. If I I'm if it. I'm sad and depressed, mm-hmm. I won't make something because it's gonna sound like, like it's gonna sound like death. It's gonna <laughs> like think about it. When you were saying something about the the, the, um, the energy and the frequency, and the frequencies, those frequencies touch your chakras a certain way. Four foot. The four, people, yeah. the people that 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 that, can, the, that control this, they know exactly they know what that. they're doing. They already know that. They know what they're doing, and they dropped the frequency. I forgot how many years ago from four forty hertz. And it changed music forever. Yeah, because it used to be, you know, orchestras would tune up to like uh, 432 hertz. They changed it. Now they changed it to like 8440. And the, we're talking about the frequencies. Frequencies and, are measured and, in hertz. And you feel it. Mm-hmm. Mario, the music we're, we're talking about in the 90s, it was different than it is now. That tuning makes you feel a different way, either good or bad. Sonically, right. it's it's such a and it's slight. Like this. It's, it's like a, this, Mario. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's an eyelash hair. You hear me? Yeah, it's a slight <laughs> difference, but it makes your body react differently. Yeah. This is how you can use sound as a weapon, Back. you know, yeah. in the military. This yeah. is, you know, besides the fact that I fired weapons that have blown holes in tanks, <laughs> you know. What you but, have to do? You got to go, Mario. <laughs> yeah, you right uh, here, I'm telling you, time flies by. <laughs> but I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I thank you for coming once again. Your great is much needed. It's your boy Mario High on the drop. DFWIRadio.com. Love, peace, and, and so- be great. <laughs> Mama, you got a card for like I got a zillion people that need, they need stuff that I can't.